Welcome back. In the last video we had to explain what a condensation polymer was. And in this video we're going to do something quite similar. We're going to go over the next dot point which is related. It says describe the reactions involved when a condensation polymer is formed. Okay. This time we have to describe the reactions. I did that to a degree already in the last video but I'll do it again in this video. But there's more or less three main points that need to happen for a condensation polymerization to happen. First of all, which is probably the most straightforward one, is we need to have monomers. So monomers need to be present. So mo monomers need to be present. Usually more than two. Um, usually five, six, seven, eight minimum, but we tend to have most of our polymers being quite a few hundred monomers long. But you can imagine each of these glucose here, beta glucose, which we also had in the last chapter, is a monomer. So we have to have at least two to make um, them join together, but we'll have more usually. So that's the first step. We need to have monomers. And for the second step, especially when it comes to condensation reactions that deal with water, we also need to have hydroxide groups on every end. I'm going to go over that word hydroxide. So you guys might not have heard of this before, but it's a quite common name. And it's really important as well. So hydroxide is just an OH group. So I'm sure you've seen an OH group before. But the scientific word for it is hydroxide. So hydroxide, OH, and every end, so every end, so both ends of the monomer, every end of monomer needs to have, so needs to have this, needs to have an OH group or a hydroxide group. I'm going to explain why as well, why that has to happen. But so far we said we need to have monomers present and we need to have at least, especially when it comes to condensating water out, we need to have a hydroxide group on every end, an OH group on every end of the monomer. And the last step, the third step, is that the monomers, so the monomers join, monomers join at OH, at the hydroxide group, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to show you a diagram and go through that as well. But they join at the OH group, and when they join at the OH group, then we have a water molecule, so H2O, being lost. And I'm going to show all that happen now. So we've got our condensation polymer here. So you can see we've got on every end we have a hydroxide group. So one here, one there, and for the other one, one here and one there. So each of the monomers has that, which is important. Um, what happens when they combine, so at the moment they're separate, but now they're going to combine, is you can imagine this O might be the O from the second glucose, and then we lose one of the hydrogens from that, and we lose the other hydrogens from the other glucose. So we actually lose quite a bit. So we lose two hydrogens and two oxygens combined here. And then but we lose most of that in, in terms of water. So this is lost. And the actual two monomers only join at the, one of those oxygens, which was in the hydroxide group. So monomers join here. And we have our water lost. Water is lost. So go through the steps. Monomer, monomers need to be present, so we've got monomers. Um, each end needs to have an, a hydroxide group, so they can bind right there. And then the monomers, first step, the monomers join, so at one of those oxygens. And when that happens, we lose um, H2O, so we lose the other parts of the hydroxide group. And then we lose that in form of water itself. I'm going to go over another example, and now I can show you what happens if we don't have a hydroxide group on either end. So you can imagine here we've got a dicarboxyl acid and a diol. Di means two. So just di just means two in general, so both for diol and for dicarboxyl acid. I'm only going to underline the carboxyl acid groups. This part here is the carboxyl acid group. So we've got two on, there, on either end, and for the other one we've got two Alcohols. Alcohols is just this one. So the all refers to alcohol, and that's just an OH group. And we have one on the other on the side as well. 
So if these were to join, they could join. You could literally have this here, this oxygen, joining with this carbon. And then remember, we have the other ones being lost in the form of water, so I'm going to erase them because they're lost, but they're going to be lost in the form, and this hydrogen as well, but they're going to be lost in the form of water. So they're going to be removed, and they're going to be removed as H2O. H2O. So now we've condensated them, we have joined them together, and we have lost H2O. But the problem is, if we don't have it, so now we can, this is one, two monomers joined together, but now we want to join the next one. The next one is not a dicarboxyl acid, it only has one carboxyl acid group, which is here, and obviously it has a hydroxyl group there, but on the other end it doesn't have it. And if this wanted to join together, it wouldn't work anymore. And the reason why it wouldn't work is because if you have H2 being lost, H2O being lost, H2O, then we have one H here, one H here, so we've got two H's, and we have an oxygen, so that's enough. But if we lose all that, so I'm just going to imagine we've lost that in the form of water, because that's what has to happen. But if we lose all that, we have no oxygen left to actually join them. Remember, they have to be joined at an oxygen, but we had no hydroxyl group, so that's, there's nothing left, so we can't join them. So even though we've lost water, and that's possible, we can't join them, so we can't bind them. So this doesn't work anymore. This doesn't work. So we need to make sure we have a hydroxyl group on every end of the monomers. They don't have to be the same ones. In this case, we actually have two different types of monomers. We've got digoboxyl acid and diol, and they form something called nylon. So this is the nylon when they're joined together. It's nylon. And nylon is also interesting because nylon is actually used in swim gear, like swimmers are usually nylon, and the reason why is because nylon is very water res resistant. You don't have to memorize um, the lower one here in terms of the, the actual structure. I just wanted to show you what happens if one of the groups does not have a hydroxide group uh, because they can't bind, they can't form more monomers, uh, polymers, if they, if they don't have on each end a hydroxide group. So the three steps again was monomers have to be present, a hydroxide has to be present on either end, on both ends of the monomer. And then the monomers join at that OH, so those hydroxide groups will join together. And when they join together, we only have one oxygen being left to bind the two, and the rest of the atoms will be lost in the form of water. So that will be lost to the surroundings. So I hope that was useful.